My name is Michael. I'm a researcher at the Division of Imaging Sciences and Biomedical Engineering at King's College London. And I was mostly involved in um, the website development for the Gordon Museum. We also um, developed some e-learning platforms uh, for the Gordon Museum. One was the website. Um, another one was to use augmented reality uh, for, to enhance some of the specimens. And then we also have some of the storyline bits that Nina will be talking about later. I'm Nina. I'm a medical student in Brazil. And I'm studying for one year uh, forensic science with criminology in the University of Derby. And we have a collaboration now with the King's College London with the Garden Museum. I was involved in the storyline during the case of the church cellar murder and uh, recreating the trial of Harry Dobkin. The concept originated from uh, two SSC students, Greg and Alex. They started off, you know, looking at the specimen and saying it would be really nice if we can instead of having to come to the museum and having to leaf through and uh, study here, you know, maybe eight, eight hours a day, um, it'd be nice if you can have this in the palm of your hand. And so it started off as a mobile app. And they developed this app where you can navigate through uh, basically uh, just the revision sections. So that got a number of people interested. A proposal was submitted for uh, the College Teaching Fund. So the CTF proposal had a number of project partners um, this included Koval, who is a project lead, um, Elena and Stilianos from CTEL, uh, Bill from the museum, and a number of others. We want to develop some e-learning platforms to um, move the museum more into a digital age. Um, so we did this in three ways. The first was the website um, to put everything into a digital into a digital format, um, and then the other, and then from there we can we used a uh, augmented reality to help enhance the, spe the individual specimens. Again, this, all this information was taken off, sits inside the um, database, and then we could just, because it's all in a digital format, we could just pull the information onto the screen of an iPad. And then the other, and the other thing that we did was, and this was mostly Nina's work, is the storyline based. Um, for the storyline, we got a lot of help from Elena and Stelianos from CTEL. Um, so they helped us in terms of design. Elena had a lot of, had a lot of prior experience in Storyline and so she was the one who uh, told us about how to use it. She gave us a bit of, she gave us um, some tutorials and um, she also helped review the Storyline a, a, a number of times, um, helping out with the whole, the design and the colors and um, making it accessible to those with visual and audio impairments. My main focus was using Storyline to recreate the trial. And this was kind of difficult in a way because I never used the software before. So it was very time consuming to learn how to use it and to edit the images. During the course of the story, the student will need to use augmented reality to continue and to be able to uh, gain more information to actually finish the, the story. The software we use for augmented reality was Layer. Uh, in order to use Layer, we needed to have a little bit of coding experience, which I didn't had. So it was kind of challenging trying to learn HTML and JavaScript. Because all these specimens are human tissue, um, they're covered under the Human Tissue Act of 2004. And for this reason, a lot of the stuff that we do, we have to be very careful in terms of legal aspects and also eth ethical aspects. In terms of the technology for augmented reality, probably the biggest challenge was that a lot of it is code-based. So you, don't, um, you have a basic interface to develop the augmented reality, but for any advanced features like interactivity, you'd have to know a bit about HTML, some JavaScript, for the storyline, again, this was also a very time-consuming process. Um, the interface was quite easy to use, but if you want to get into the fine detail, like especially uh, sequences of events, then you'd have, then you'd there'd be a, a steeper learning curve. 
one of the challenges of the storyline was that we wanted to make it as interesting as possible and engaging as possible. And the, art, the artwork put into it, each image would take maybe half a day. And the storyline consisted of maybe 50, 50 to 100 images. Staff and students' response was really positive for this project. Um, we actually did a subjective study. So we had a questionnaire um, for students. Um, we recruited about 30 students uh, to ev help evaluate the website, the augmented reality, and the storyline as e-learning platforms. Um, overall, we got about 85% positive responses. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of the students said that it was much more engaging, it was much more interesting. Um, you had much more information available from the specimens because our, um, for each specimen, we put in a lot of additional study and you're, we were able to consolidate all that information. Um, especially in a digital environment, you can put as much information as you want in a single specimen. The augmented reality helped students uh, understand the specimen much quicker. Um, usually, if you were to study a specimen on, on your own, it would take you about 30 minutes up to a couple of hours. Um, that's just because trying to understand the specimen and then also trying to identify where the pathology is, is quite difficult. And so with this augmented reality, you can see right away. We also did an objective study. We ran it like an OSCE station. We recruited about 20, 20 or so specimens um, and we block randomized them. So we split them in half. Um, half the students would kind of study specimens using the augmented reality and half of them would study specimens using the traditional text-based approach. And we found that students who did, um, who used augmented reality to learn about anatomy and pathology and other specimens um, performed about 20, 20 to 25% better than the students who studied uh, using the text-based approach. The forensic students and the lecturers, they were also very interested about this project because it incorporates not only just the forensic techniques, but also some medical knowledge. So actually makes this study of the forensic techniques much more interesting for the forensic science students and they need to face it in real scenarios. It is not possible to get all the experience you need during the, the course itself of a graduation. So enabling the students to get more involved with real case scenarios makes them more engaged and it prepares them better for their real professional life. In future years, um, each term we would have SSC students or IBSC students coming in and getting involved in this project and slowly um, each of them would, kind, would add a number of specimens to the cataloging system um, and so eventually over the years uh, the entire museum collection of approximately 8,000 or so specimens would be cataloged within the website. In terms of augmented reality the same thing, um, the future plans would be to slowly develop augmented reality content for the key specimens of each section or of each topic. Um, again, this would be done through either an SSC module or an IBSC project. And so a lot of medical students or even biomedical engineering or any healthcare discipline um, or related disciplines can help get involved. And this will help focus on the museum. This was a pilot study, so we actually need to do more research and get more students involved to get a, a really definite result about how augmented reality actually improves the studying and interpretation of the pathology. And in terms of storyline, our future plan would be to possibly catalog more of the murder cases. There's four famous cases or infamous cases here at the museum, um, but there's also a lot of other cases that are very interesting and the techniques that they used here set a lot of precedents for the um, techniques used today. Um, and we would like to catalog more of these specimens in kind of a storyline format.